Hello, today I was on Linux Mint and I was thinking I wanted to try this really cool ROM hack that I found on romhacking.net. It's called a Link to the Past DX. I did some reading about it and this is what it did it for me right here. Improved Pegasus boots turn while running and break pots with sword. I've already tried this out and believe me, the Pegasus boots are amazing, but breaking pots with a sword, I've wanted that ever since I played this game in the first place and just never had it. So I was on Linux, I downloaded the IPS patch, I was about to transfer the patch and the ROM to my phone, then I thought, what am I doing? I know I can remove the header and patch the ROM on my phone, but I should have utilities like this for Linux. I shouldn't have to rely on some other platform to be able to do this type of stuff. So I just started looking around at different utilities. The first one I found is called Floating IPS. This is an excellent utility. I've already downloaded the file here. This one comes pre-compiled. It's really easy to run. All you have to do is extract it open the folder and go to where it says flips, flips Linux, go to properties, go to permissions, just click allow executing file as program because it doesn't come like that for some reason. Anyway, go ahead and double click this. You can apply patches and you can create patches with this. It's pretty amazing. But then I was looking at my ROM and I remembered I tried patching this before and this is a headered ROM, not an unheadered ROM. When I looked at the page for this ROM, it says right here, no header. So my ROM's not going to work. So I started looking around again. I found this second utility here. It's called Tush. This is a tool for adding and removing headers from SNES ROMs, and it works great. I already took the liberty of downloading the file, so let me show you how to use this first. The first thing you're going to notice is that it's not compiled. You're going to go into this source code folder, right click, go to open in terminal, type in make, and you're going to get an error message because your system is not equipped with WX widgets. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Now besides this missing dependency, I had no problem running this, but I've also got build essentials and G++ and some other things for compiling source code already. WX Widgets is basically a cross-platform GUI library. I'm going to need to download this again because I don't know what I did with my old copy. I may have deleted it. Oh good, it's nice and small. Done. Nice. There's just a lot of files in that archive. It's not big. I'm going to show you what I did in what order. I'm going to go into the main folder and just click open in terminal. Now let me look at these files. You have a configure and you also have a make file. So this is what I did. Slash dot configure. This one I can sit through. It doesn't take a really long time. Okay, great. I'm glad that's done. Now the next thing I did was type in the command make. This one I have to warn you, it took approximately 45 plus minutes. I was only estimating. I didn't run a timer. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this is compiling. Okay, I just control C'd out of it. 
but the very last thing you want to do is sudo make install. If you're willing to sit through the 45 plus minutes it takes to compile this and then type in sudo make install, you'll have this dependency and you'll be able to compile that program just fine. I've already got the dependency installed, so I'm going to go ahead with compiling the main program. This one, by contrast, is very nice to compile. You just go into the Tush folder and go into the SRC folder. Just type in the command make, that's it. Done, that fast. Now just for now, I'm gonna type in dot slash Tush because I haven't really added this to my menu yet. Now I've gotten this error message every time I click on browse. I went ahead and left it up that way I can show it to you. All you need to do is uncheck this box for show this dialog the next time and then click continue. I don't think you're going to have to deal with it after that. I'm going to go ahead and load Super Metroid first. This file is unheadered. I remember I had previously removed the header for this because I was about to patch it and then I just left it alone. But now we're going to do the, the other one. This file is headered. Okay, so I need to remove the header before I can patch this. I just click remove header. Done. It overwrites the original file and now I have no header. If you want to verify. Huh. Okay, I guess I am seeing this message again. That's not cool. I'm just going to go ahead and verify that real quick. Well, if I have to deal with that message every single time, that's not fun, but at least I still have a, a header removal utility that works in Linux. Yeah, I don't get why this is happening, but I don't really feel like getting into it right now. I just want to go ahead with the IPS patching. Okay, just double click Flips Linux, it's this easy. Apply patch. Would help if I remembered to extract it first. Let's do that again. Okay, there's my IPS patch or BPS patch. Either way it'll work. Select File to Patch. There's my file to patch. I just click open. Select output file. ALTTPDX. Save. Patch was applied successfully. Okay, let's go ahead and give this a shot and see if it worked. See if I can navigate to this quickly. Yep, it put the ROM in its own folder, I see. Please be patched. Yes! Awesome, it worked. Ah, who cares what the name is. Just wanted to try something really quick. Just let me get through this guy's speech. Oh, nice. I can do turbo on that.
I guess he's JJ Jameson now. What am I doing? I do have a sword. Okay. There you have it. Urns can be slashed. That's like my favorite thing in the world about this patch, even though it's got bug fixes and various improvements. That's all I'm going to do right now with this. I just wanted to show you that real quick. Thanks a lot for watching my video, and I'll see you in the next one.